Well, scientists are hunting for the origins of this novel coronavirus as it continues to spread around the world. And even though little is known about this virus so far, experts suspect that bats could be the likely hosts. And for more on this, we're joined by Assistant Professor Danielle Anderson from the Emerging Infectious Diseases Program at Duke NUS Medical School. Good evening, Danielle. As we understand it, coronaviruses are zoonotic diseases, meaning that they spread from animals to humans. Can you help us better understand just how that can happen and, and also how to prevent it? So zoonotic spread could be, as you mentioned, uh, is the spread of disease from um, animals to people. And a lot of it comes down to being in the right place at the right time. And you can catch diseases such as rabies from uh, dogs, infected dogs. And as you mentioned, we're suspecting that this virus could possibly come from bats. So one of the ways that that can happen is people come into contact with wildlife or also infected animals as in the case of rabies and a couple of examples of exactly how this comes about uh, I can give you a in the case of Nipah virus bats drink palm sap that people collect and then people can uh, come to acquire Nipah virus and another instance in Malaysia there's a virus called Malacca virus and that happens when, when a bat flew into somebody's house and then infected them that way. And in other, along the lines of bats again, if bats are eating fruit in trees and then animals are being kept under the trees, uh, such as pigs or horses, they can come into contact with urine and feces from the bats and get infected that way. And then those animals, either bats could infect people or those other animals such as the horses or pigs could then infect us. So this is something that's possibly happening at for example, the market in Wuhan. What is it about bats that makes it this way, that they're reservoir species for viruses and pandemic uh, potential? Why are they so adept at harboring and spreading viruses? So uh, bats are actually pretty cool. So they, they live a long time and they generally don't get sick. So that's good for them and maybe not so good for us. And they have found ways to live with the viruses and without dying and getting sick. So as during different seasons or different periods of stress, the viruses can shed from these animals and infect us. Danielle, we know that in the case of SARS, uh, bats were implicated there as well, although it, it supposedly went from bats to civet cats and then to humans. Uh, and bats do harbor this significantly higher proportion of zoonotic viruses than other mammals. But should we be concerned, considering that here in Singapore we do have over 20 species of bats? So we should be aware of the diseases that bats can carry, but I don't think there's a cause for panic. So, uh, for example, in my lab, one of the research projects that we have done in conjunction with EHI and NPARCS is we've looked at, uh, looked at bats and we've found in Singapore that bats actually do carry uh, coronaviruses, but these have not been shown to be pathogenic or have, have not jumped to people. And the people have been living with these bats for a long time. And in Singapore as well, they, uh, bats have been shown to have filovirus antibodies by another team member at Duke and US. And they, we've, we've, as I mentioned, we've been living with them for a long time. So I, I don't think that there's a cause for panic now, but uh, we should just be aware to keep our distance from them. Danielle, thank you very much for sharing that with us. We've been speaking there to Assistant Professor Danielle Anderson at the Duke NUS Medical School.